Church. Pre-made e-bikes that you can buy are getting faster and faster and faster. But today, we're going to look at one that might top them all. This is the Goat Power Bikes Motor Goat. This is a 60 volt system, 50 amp controller, and this thing tops out at over 40 miles an hour stock. And today we're gonna bring it through its paces. We're gonna do the hill climb testing that we normally do, the top speed testing, the off-road testing, believe it or not. And together we're gonna find out just what this Motor Goat e-bike is capable of. Let's take a look. The Goat Power Bikes Motor Goat is the fastest pre-made e-bike I've ever tested. Its direct drive motor paired with a 60 volt system gives it a top speed of at least 40 miles an hour on flat ground. And with a 50 amp controller, it has the torque to climb hills just as easily as some of the 60 volt geared hub e-bikes that are out in the market today. What's really exciting for me is the potential that this e-bike has for upgradability. It's already running at great voltage, it comes with a solid frame with tons of space for another battery, is fitted with dual suspension, and comes with a motor that seems like it can handle more power than it's already pushing. This bike is destined to be a favorite of many for the modding community. And best of all, you can get this amazing e-bike for just about $2,000 using the code MAX10 which saves you 10% or just over $200. Every year, we only get a handful of e-bikes that are truly special. This is one of them. Today, we're gonna go over the specs and components of the Motor Goat, and then take it out on the road for our usual testing. The motor just keeps pulling. Look at that, 43, 44. There we go, 44. Yeah, yeah, baby. Let's jump right in. Sit. Spin, sit, lay down, sit, paw, other paw, other paw, there you go, all right, all the paws, here you go, here's your treat. All right, guys, it is time to check out the specs and components of the Goat Power Bikes Motor Goat. Let's take a look, we're gonna start from the top. All right, so up here we've got kind of like a plasticky, rubberized handle. Light switch on top, high beam, off, low beam. There's the high beam, off, low beam. And these outside portions right here, they always stay lit up, which looks very cool. And then we also have our horn button. Sounds like a weird beeping sound. I really need a more aggressive sounding horn for this, guys. Come on, this is the Motor Goat. All right, here we go. Moving on, we got a button up here, which turns on your hazard lights. Check that out. Let's turn those off. And then we got turn signals back here, left and right. I really like that you can see these turn signals from the rider's position. That way you're not just riding around with a turn signal that's on and you have no idea. One more cool feature about these turn signals, they do have these nifty little red lights that light up the ground. That's kind of cool. 
By the way, guys, these turn signals are flexible. So in case you clip them against something, they will not break. They will just bend and snap right back into place. These kind of remind me of the uh, door stoppers that are in my house. Boing. Unfortunately for the backlight, when you turn the turn signal on, you just get a solid yellow light. So I don't know if they're gonna fix that in future versions. I wish that blinked. What are you gonna do? Moving on over, we got the control panels. Let's turn this on. Hold the power button, goat bikes. Look at that. All right, so, so check it out. In the lower power modes, you get green, then you get blue and two and three, and then it goes to red for high speed. To turn the headlight on, you hold down the plus switch, and then after that, this switch actually works. Otherwise, if that's off, the switch does nothing. By the way, guys, this display, I did shift over to the side because I had my phone holder over here to make sure we had an accurate GPS readout for speed. Moving on over, we've got the key for the ignition. You cannot use this bike if this key is out of here. So right now it's switched on, we turn it off and that removes all power so the bike shuts off completely. Otherwise, if you switch it on, if you notice that light on the ground lights up and that's your cue that you can actually turn this bike on. Full twist throttle on the right hand side, very nice. This bike also comes with metal solid feeling mirrors on the bike, although I prefer a single handlebar mirror on the sides. These mirrors are very nice looking, extremely solid. So if you like this style of mirror, these already come stock with the bike. So that's pretty cool. And we have some Ron Galan branded, is that how you pronounce it? Hydraulic disc brake levers. These brakes do work fantastic. Moving on back, we have our giant 25 amp hour 60 volt battery. And if you guys do want to see how to remove this battery and put it back on, check out the unboxing video I made. I'll leave a link in the description and it should be on the top right hand corner of the screen. But let's get into the battery. So the battery charge, low battery, red, medium, green, full blue. Right now we're at a green charge. Look at that logo, goat bikes, badass. And there's some numbers on the battery if you guys want to take a look. This battery does use Lishen 50G. 21700 cells and even though those cells are pretty good i haven't seen any issues with them goat power bikes will be switching over to samsung cells as soon as possible so they are listening to you guys they are going to be switching over to samsung cells they know that you guys really want those check this out guys so the charger that you get is a 5 amp charger that is awesome and this thing doesn't have a fan it's a passively cooled charger it does get warm when you are charging the battery, but it doesn't get hot. It won't get dangerously hot. If you guys are worried, you can always throw some kind of house fan right in front of it. A lot of e-bikes do come with passively cooled chargers. It's really not a big deal. But guys, this is a big, heavy battery, 25 amp hour, 60 volts. That's gonna give you a lot of range. Moving on back to the seat. This is a pretty comfortable seat, guys. Got this kind of tan colored seat. Check out that logo, guys. How cool is that? And behind that GOAT logo is where the controller sits. We're gonna take a look at that in a second. Back here is the hole that you put your wheel lock in. I didn't keep the wheel lock on my bike, but it does come with the bike, so, so this is a place to store that lock. Let's move on down and check out the suspension. So this is a Fast Ace rear suspension. There's that model number for you. And over here are two adjustments for the suspension. Along with right there, you can actually make this firmer, although this is already a pretty firm suspension. So some of you guys might be switching the spring out to something a little bit softer, but if you are on the heavier side, this spring will probably be just fine. Here's what I look like on the bike at 5 foot 10. And here's what the suspension travel looks like in the front and the back. Check out these orange suspension forks. Look at that. And here we have the usual compression and preload adjustment. The riser handlebars do give a nice upright feel to this bike. I'm sure this bike would look really interesting if you brought this down and gave it that cafe racer look. That might be kind of cool. You don't get this color with other color option for this bike. So if you like these suspension forks, make sure you get this color option. Front fender, not too much flop. The back portion of the fender is 
on the bike itself. And as you can see, it is working just fine. I think this gives the bike an overall sportier look in my opinion. And there it is guys, there's the 203 millimeter rotor with the quad piston calipers. Something that I think is very necessary for a bike this heavy and this fast. And of course we've got those epic looking mag wheels, always appreciated. Guys, these tires are incredible. These are Innova 20 by four and a half inch tires. As you can tell, they have a street pattern on them that keeps them nice and smooth. Although the one downside about this tire is that there isn't a whole lot of clearance between the fork and the tire. And if you don't arrange the washers down here correctly, you will get some rubbing on this side. As you can see, I did rub a tiny bit earlier before I changed the washer arrangement. What I did was I took one of the regular washers and instead of keeping it on the outside, I put it on the inside. And that did fix a lot of the rubbing on this side. On this side, it is still a little bit tight. We're gonna air down the tires to 15 PSI and see if that helps. And allegedly that does not affect top speed. So we'll see if we could fix that rubbing. And on that note, I do know that the team over at Goat Power Bikes, they are looking into getting a wider fork for this bike to make sure that's not gonna be an issue anymore. All right, looks like 15 PSI did give us just enough clearance. Moving on down, guys, we've got a lot of mounting points for pretty much anything you want on this side and on this side right here. Now, Goat Power Bikes, they do sell a second battery option. So you get a second battery mounted here or there. It comes with a battery blender. Or if you guys want a custom sized gigantic battery to fit this entire cavity right here, check out northeastbatterysystems.com. They will help you out. Custom made, reasonably priced American made batteries that can fit this entire cavity. Kevin over at Northeast Battery Systems, he already actually has an order for this bike. Someone wants a battery that fits this whole cavity and allegedly it's going to be 50 or more amp hours. That's insane. So check them out if you guys do want a custom sized battery for this cavity. Link to that in the description below. All right, moving on back. Look at this thick cable right here. This is the motor power cable. You got all your hall sensor wires and your phase wires in here. And this is the thickest cable I've ever seen because there is a lot of current going through that cable and you wanna make sure this cable doesn't melt. So that's good that they gave you a nice big cable. If you notice down here, I didn't install the pedal kit. I just have the pegs in this bike, which you can do if you like, but when you're on the website, if you order this bike with pedals, it will come with the pedals fully installed with a shifter and everything. So you won't have any kind of legal issues and you can still pedal this bike if you want. Personally, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna throw on the crank and the pedals and just add one gear to the other side because let's be honest, you're not really gonna pedal this bike all that much. But if you guys do want pedals, this bike does come with a seven speed Shimano shifter. So you do have that option if you want. Another giant 203 millimeter rotor in the back with the Ron Glunn branded quad piston caliper. Nice plastic fender in the back, team plastic fenders. And these look fantastic guys. These look like metal fenders, but they are nice and quiet. One side note, if you guys are flipping your bike over, make sure to adjust this point right here because I did flip my bike over when I was putting the front wheel down and this fender was pushed down and it was rubbing on the wheel a little bit. So make sure to readjust that fender, pull this whole thing up, tighten this down to make sure there's proper spacing between the tire and the fender. One small potential issue that I see right here is that the motor cable is pretty close to that disc. So if I were you, I would throw on some extra zip ties right here, maybe one or two, just to make sure this stays put because you do not want to cut this open. Standard kickstand in the back. Look at this orange and yellow logo, Motor Goat. Check out that logo on the motor. So right now mine doesn't come with any gears, but if you order yours with pedals, you will get seven speeds back here. And of course you'll get your chain ring over here. Some more epic looking mag wheels in the back. Look at these wheels, guys. These look awesome. So this motor back here, this is the main event of this e-bike. This is a 2000 watt nominal direct drive motor. 
And with 60 volts, 50 amps going into it, it will peak at 3000 watts. I'll leave the name of this motor up on the screen. I don't know how to pronounce it. If you guys know any more information about this motor, please leave it in the comments below. And what I will be doing in the future is thermal testing this motor, and seeing how many amps at 60 volts it can reliably handle. So stay tuned for that, guys. You guys are gonna see a lot more videos about this bike and how we can make it faster. So the difference between a direct drive motor and a geared hub motor that you'll commonly see on a bike is that this doesn't have any gears in it and so it's a lot simpler of a motor. There are no gears inside to strip and this motor can tolerate a lot more heat and a lot more power than a geared hub motor. There's a couple Allen bolts underneath the seat that we're going to unscrew and take a look at the controller. A couple more bolts under there. Let's unscrew everything. All right, guys, we took off the four bolts. Let's take the seat off. And there she is. Guys, before you touch anything over here, make sure you fully discharge the capacitors in the controller. And the way to do that is you remove the battery, you turn the bike on, and there it is. If you saw that light turn on and off, those lights on the ground did also turn on and off. That means all the energy out of the system has been expended and now you can safely touch what's in here. Regardless, I'm gonna make the disclaimer, do this at your own risk. If you break something or hurt yourself, it is not my fault. And guys, there's our XT90 controller for the battery. This is getting an extra amount of power. Typically we see XT60 connectors. This comes with an XT90 connector because we're pushing 50 amps at 60 volts. Here's where all the phase wires connect to the motor. So if you do need to remove this motor, you're gonna have to undo all of these and you'll have to disconnect these and you'll have to undo these zip ties of where the motor cable runs down and then you'll be able to remove this wheel. So there is no quick disconnect for this motor cable. And that's actually a good thing because a lot of those connections, they have a limit as to how much power you can send through them. And for this bike, it would probably burn out that connector. So instead, we have this yellow one right here that's a little bit more robust. And this way you don't have things melting all over the place like you do on some other bikes that try to run too much power through the quick connectors. All right, let's take this controller out. On the test ride, you will hear this controller moving around a bit, but GOAT power bikes, they are gonna put 3M double-sided tape where this controller mounts so it stays in place and it doesn't rattle around at all. It's not loose in there, but it has about a millimeter of movement in there that'll cause it to rattle over any kind of bump. So I'm glad they are fixing that. All right, guys, we got the controller out and we're not gonna open this up today. Later on, what I am gonna try and do is a shunt mod to this controller. And then later in future videos, completely switch this out with probably a far driver. But for today's video review, we're just gonna take a look at this label over here so you guys can get a better idea. Look at that, 60 volts, 50 amps. Very nice. And side note guys, they are updating this controller to make sure you guys get a higher speed and to make sure the motor runs quieter. Because right now this motor does generate a little bit of noise. It's not a lot, but it does kind of sound like a geared hub motor, which is interesting. And so with the updated controller that they are gonna be releasing for this bike, you'll not only get more speed, but a quieter system as well. And they are going to be releasing that very soon. If you're not sure which version controller you're gonna be getting or which battery cells you're gonna be getting in your battery, double check with customer service before you place your order. All right, guys, so let's check out the advanced settings of this bike. So obviously you're gonna go ahead and turn it on. And to get to those advanced settings, you just hold the plus and minus button and there we are. So wheel size, here's where you go ahead and change the speedometer to be more accurate. We're gonna keep tweaking this in the days to come to make sure it is perfectly, perfectly in line with GPS speed, but I found 22 and a half to be pretty close. You guys let me know in the comments below if you found a different setting to be better. Speed limit. Obviously, bring that bad boy all the way up to 100. Start strength. So there's your starting strength of how strong this motor starts off. Default is at three. Why don't we bring that all the way up to five? I actually had it at three for my test, so maybe Go! that'll make it even faster of an accelerator. We'll see, I don't know. And you can just go ahead and exit. 
All right, guys, let's check out the Goat Power Bikes website, the future of cycling. Let's go ahead and check out the bikes, press on shop. So there are some accessories that you can get. Let's see what we got. All right, so here's your second battery right there. Second battery, 60 volt, 20 amp hour kit for the Motor Goat version three, 600 bucks. And there's the frame bag that you can get with the bike. This bag is fantastic for storage, although it does have a divider inside that makes it not the best for a battery, but we'll see if we can maybe remove that divider. We'll see what happens. Check this out. You can get a backrest with this bike. That looks awesome. Look at that. Check out that frame bag right there. That looks nice. Wow, look at that. How do I get that? Guys, if I find out how to get this frame bag, I'll leave a link in the description below. That is a nice bag. You can get a cargo rack as well. Very nice. Giant storage. Let's check this out. Look at that. You can get this giant storage basket. All right. Pedal conversion kit. If you did buy this bike without any kind of pedals, just the pegs, and you want to buy the conversion kit as well, there it is. And here's some different color foot pegs. There's also a couple batteries in here for earlier versions of the bike. Let's check out the e-bike. So here we are. Here's the Motor Goat 2399 does have a billy goat with a different style of frame and then this power goat which is good for two people but it doesn't have a rear suspension these are cheaper than the motor goat version 3 let's go ahead and click that and this bike does come with two colors this muted gray color right here this looks pretty sleek and stealthy i like this got the black seat in the back and of course you get the color that i have as well so you guys can pick your favorite you could select it with pedals or no pedals if you guys do get the version with pedals, they will come installed on the bike. You won't have to install it yourself. It'll be all set and ready to go. Let's go ahead and check out what some of this says. So next shipment will be in March. Yeah, there it is, guys. There's that 2000 watt nominal motor. And it says here it peaks at 2600 watts, although 60 times 50 is 3000 watts. So I just say 3000 watts. Some torque ratings, a little bit about the battery max speed between 40 and 50 miles an hour i got 40 miles an hour some people get a little bit higher i've seen this bike on videos go up to like maybe 43 although they are releasing a new controller which allegedly will get this a little bit closer to that 50 mile an hour mark we'll find out it is pretty cool that you get two locks so obviously the key in the ignition and then that wheel lock for the rear wheel the bike does weigh 103 pounds so this is a heavier bike just keep that in mind max rider weight of 450 pounds and that stiff spring in the back will help if you are on the heavier side or maybe if you're a normal sized person but you have a lot of cargo on the back i do like that the seat is large comfortable and is a good distance from the ground it's 33 inches from the ground some moped style e-bikes they're really small they feel like you're riding a toy this actually has a good size to it it feels like a normal sized bike and the most important part, guys, check this out. $23.99. I, I added this bike to the car already. Let's check it out. Let's type in my code, max10. There it is. Look at that. It saves you $239, almost $240. Comes down to a price of just over $2,000. What an amazing deal. So those are the specs and components of the GOAT Power Bikes Motor GOAT. Let's take it out on the road for a test ride. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today is a very special day. We are out here on the GOAT, the Motor GOAT <laughs> from GOAT Power Bikes. It is drizzling just a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit of drizzle. It just stopped raining. And guys, today we're going to be starting with our usual main hill climb test. Let's see how this does without further ado. Level 5 pedal assist will get the most power from this bike. Full fresh charge. Here we go. 3, 2, 1, go. Good torque off the line, guys. Good torque. Even though this is a direct drive motor with the amount of power it's pushing, it's got a good amount of torque. And we are going up this no problem. You guys notice the speedometer isn't 100% accurate, but we will be adjusting that. Don't you worry. Oh man, look at that. We are almost at 30 miles an hour. Hell yeah. Oh, that's amazing. All right, guys. 
Let's go down this hill and see what the downhill speed is. Let's see if we can get there quick. Talk down a bit. Going downhill, 41, 43, 44, 45. All right, that's the downhill speed, and that wasn't a big hill. All right, headed over to our main hill climb test. Stopping at the stop sign, thank you. If you guys like videos like this, please feel free to subscribe, like the video if you like it, hit the notification bell. And if you don't like this video, tell me why in the comments. Tell me why you're mad. Tell me your life problems. Here it is, guys. Complete stop at the stop sign. This is throttle only because I have no pedals. I only have the pegs on this. We'll throw the pedals on later on, but I wanted to get this review going. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. The rack drive motor. Okay. 14 miles an hour. All right. 14, 13. Pretty good. Pretty good, man, that is impressive for a direct drive motor. That's impressive, guys. This motor, I wanna say, if you guys are familiar with um, electric motors at all, they can be customized through how you do the windings inside the motor to either be higher torque or higher speed. And right now, it kinda feels like this motor is wound to be more torque because that was fairly torquey. Yeah, that was impressive. That went up at the same speed as essentially a geared hub motor. 60 volt geared hub motor. That's impressive. Maybe they snuck some gears in there and I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they uh maybe they're pulling the old switcheroo with us. And this bike does have quad piston hydraulic disc brakes. And 203 millimeter rotors on both wheels that is a lot of stopping power and we're going to be testing the stopping power right now here we go 20 miles an hour all right stops just fine as you would expect stops on a dime let's do that again ready the rear wheel locks up it actually lifted up I know you can't tell in the video, but it did lift up. It did slide out for me sideways just a tiny bit, but plenty of stopping power in this bike. Love it. And we're off. Yeah, if you can tell the speedometer by default is off about three miles an hour. We can tweak that in the settings easily because you can adjust the wheel size. So we'll do that during this ride. But right now we're almost hitting 40. And once you get to the downhill part, then it really picks up. The motor just keeps pulling. Look at that, 43, 44. Oh, here we go, can I get a 44? Here we go, 44. Yeah, yeah baby. Oh, we hit 45, all right. Nice guys, this motor's fantastic. So what we're gonna do is pull over here to the side. We're gonna pull over here to the side and record a little bit more footage and adjust the wheel size as well. All right, so let's go into the settings. And I think what we have to do is make the wheel size smaller. So you go to wheel size, right now we're at 24. Let's try 22. All right, now it's reading a little bit slower. So let's adjust it again. Try 22.5, let's see how that goes. All right, looks like we're pretty good now. 22 and a half for the wheel size is the winning number. All right, so we mostly fixed the speedometer. We can make some small adjustments later on to get that more accurate, but for the most part, I'm happy where it's at. Regardless, we're gonna go ahead and use the GPS for top speed testing. You could just easily keep up with traffic this is great. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and do our top speed test and our zero to 20 test. And we'll do it twice. No cars, here we go. Three, two, one, boom. 
20. 30. 40, all right, we're pretty much at 40, all right. 40. All right, let's go ahead and do that same thing back. And for your reference, guys, I am 200 pounds. Temperature outside right now is about 40 degrees, somewhere on there, maybe a tiny bit over. Let's cross this road get a good starting point still don't know if I'm a fan of these mirrors I really like my mirror that comes out to the side I'll probably use that one later on three two one boom twenty come on baby Alright, we're almost at 35. Alright, 35. We're tucked down, guys. Come on, baby. Alright, we're at 40. Alright. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is a 40 mile an hour bike. If you did weigh less, you could probably go uh, a little bit faster. A lot of people think that top speed is only voltage related, but that's only once you remove all the other variables that restrict the wheel from spinning at its maximum RPM. You know what? I almost forgot to do a little bit of off-roading. Let's go over here. All right, let's continue on. All right, let's see what a little bit of off-roading feels like. I feel like this back spring is on the stiffer side. And that's good if you're a heavier person riding this bike. The shock won't bottom out. But I still feel the suspension working great. Very pleased with that. I really like this version of the GOAT power bike that has dual suspension. I know there's one that doesn't have any rear suspension. And that's not something I would want. Look at this branch. Just roll right over that. Oh, got a little bit of snow. You're not going to want to off-road this type of bike, guys. But I want to see if it can handle it. Yeah, easy peasy. This thing has some torque, guys. I swear, maybe they snuck some gears in there. Maybe this is geared hub motor. No, I'm just kidding. It's not. It's probably made for torque. It's got the winding for a higher torque. Usually, the higher the number of the winding, the higher torque the motor. But I don't know. I could be wrong. So what we're going to do now is just cruise around. We're going to put some miles on this bike and see how it does. See the range. Right now we're at about six miles and we're just going to joyride. I don't know where we're going to go, no particular place, but we'll just ride around. All right guys, so we've been riding around for a while. It is now 11 and a half miles and I figure it's a good time to let you know about the seat comfort. The seat is great. The seat is nice and flat. You sit on the seat. The seat doesn't go into you, if you know what I mean. It's not a convex seat that pushes into the area where the sun don't shine, if you know what I'm saying. So you sit on the seat. It is nice and comfy, nice and cushy. If you threw some kind of covering over it, it would be really good. I know they sell a lot of those like gel covers for, for seats. But the seat is great. And so what we'll do now is test out the different power levels and tell you what kind of speed it gets. So let's start off with number one. If you notice, it gives you some green lettering and numbers and level one. Let's see what that gives you. Very, very, very soft start. Wow, six miles an hour. Yeah, it looks like our speedometer is pretty good, pretty accurate now. 
So we set that wheel size to 22 and a half. Level two, man, you get a little bit more power. All right, so I felt the motor cut off at about 15 miles an hour. We're going downhill, so it's a little bit more. Let's break, let's get back to 15. All right, so level two, 15. Oh, level three, man, this thing has some pull. See what level three brings us. It's like about 24 miles an hour, somewhere on there. Level four, see what level four gives us. All right, looks like level four gives us about 32 miles an hour. And then as you guys remember, level five just gives you all the power. We'll get up to 40 miles an hour. I'm curious if the weather does get warmer. If I'll get a little bit more top speed, maybe we'll get up to 41, maybe 42, I don't know. I do have a backpack full of gear on me and a jacket, so I feel like maybe if I'm on the lighter side, we would get a little bit more top speed. The full twist throttle does take some getting used to, but it's not bad. As far as the brakes go, you have to remember that the brakes are reversed from what they normally are. Usually on e-bikes, the left is the front brake and the right is the rear. And for this, it's the opposite. The right brake in front of the twist throttle is the front brake and the left brake is the rear. Horn, sounds like a beep. Beep, beep, beep. I really do wish the horn was more aggressive sounding. This is the motor goat for crying out loud. It's got this tiny little beep. This thing has some pull, guys. I know some people think direct drive motors don't have a lot of pull. This thing has a good amount, ready? So here we are just standing right here. It's not as jerky right off the line. I would say the first zero to five miles an hour are smoother. It's a much smoother start, but then definitely after 10, it's comparable to a geared hub motor in the sense that the speed definitely picks up. I don't really like these mirrors. I'm not a fan. I like a mirror to stick out from the handlebar so I can really get a clear view of the back. With these mirrors, I kind of see my arms a lot. It's hard to see over my shoulder. So I don't know, I'll probably take these off and put a mirror over here on the side. It'll make this look more like an e-bike as well. I'm gonna throw on the pedals as well and make this really an actual e-bike so people don't give me any issues when it comes to police. I do hear the controller rattling around a little bit underneath the seat and I did see one guy did fix that with just some basic uh, sticky tape, double-sided tape. That's uh, what's it called, that like thick double-sided tape, like Gorilla Tape, whatever. And that seemed to fix it. That's a very simple fix. Not a big deal. This bike is on the heavier side and so you do feel that weight turning into the corners but it's not too heavy. It's an aluminum frame. That direct drive motor is on the heavier side, heavier than geared hub motors, plus the huge battery, plus the heavier tires. These are almost like motorcycle tires. 20 by four and a half inch tires. And they do feel nice, they are quiet. This really does make you feel like you're on a motorcycle, especially without the pedals. I do like that you can see the front turn signals when they're on. Sometimes you have turn signals on an e-bike, especially if it's only in the back, and you have no idea if that turn signal is on or off. But this way you can actually see it clearly if it's on or off, which is nice. You're not just riding around with a turn signal that's still on and you have no idea. This motor definitely does have a little bit of noise. It's not a super quiet motor. Definitely quieter than a geared hub motor, but it still makes a little bit of noise. All right, guys, we'll give you a little bit of a mileage update. We're almost at 15 miles, 14.45. We'll keep riding around a bit. The stop and go traffic is uh, pretty good for testing the battery because you have to constantly accelerate, stop, accelerate. And that is good for testing the motor, testing the battery, because going at a consistent speed usually takes less effort than getting up to speed. 
So if you guys ride around like me right now, you'll get a better idea of what the range of this bike will be. The battery is showing under acceleration right now, 79%. And this bike can easily get to 30 miles an hour. We're just chilling, we're cruising. Hill climbing feels great. Even with no pedals. This thing has plenty of power. Downhill speed. Look at that. Very smooth. Look at that. Easily get into 40 miles an hour. Easy. I don't know of any other e-bike that can do this. They come close. But they can't actually hit 40. This one can. Let's jump this curb. Let's see how it does. Huh. No sweat. You hear that controller rattling around a bit. That's okay, we'll fix it. Let's talk about the mods that I want to do to this bike. So number one, the center cavity has a nice large area where you can put a huge massive battery in there. So I want more range. I want another battery. Even though so far we're looking good, we're only at 70%. And I've been riding around, uh, what, 16 miles. That's pretty damn good. So also, I am a speed addict. I want more power. 40 miles an hour from a direct drive motor. Stock off the shelf. That is really, really, really good. But I want more. And because of the free spinning motor, can spin up to 53 miles an hour and we can only go 40. What I'm gonna do is add a little bit more amps into this bike. We'll see if we can push maybe 60, 70 amps. And let's see if we can bring that top speed up to maybe 45. If that's not enough, if the motor can handle more, we'll do some temperature testing on the motor. We'll see how it does. We'll uh, take a thermal camera to it, see what the motor temperature is. If it can handle more, I'm gonna put even more amps into it. I'll probably even get a different controller and we'll just keep shoving amps into this thing until it can't take it anymore. Until it's as powerful as it can be, but still reliable. And what having a second battery is good for is I can run them in parallel. I could use both batteries and I can, in theory, pull 100 amps. So I'll get a higher amp controller. It might require me to get a new display. That's okay. We'll get a higher amp controller and we'll see what this thing can do. But first, we'll probably just shunt mod the existing controller and see how that goes. I'll have to take it apart and see if that's even possible. So those are the main power modifications I would like to do to this bike. A couple aesthetic mods as well, nothing too crazy, just kind of darken all the logos, make it a little bit more stealth looking. Definitely gonna get rid of these mirrors and just have my side bar end mirror something a little bit more minimalist. I might put a uh, an even cushier seat on this thing just because I like luxury. And we are gonna throw the pedal kit on there, except I'm not gonna put the shifter on there. I'm, I'm probably just gonna buy a single gear that's geared down on the lower side. And that's gonna be for legal reasons and emergencies. In case I need to pedal, I want a lower gear. So I have the torque to pedal this giant heavy e-bike and i will also have functional pedals with pedal assist and besides that i don't know i like this bike as it is the turn signals are amazing and besides that i don't know what else i'm gonna do you guys let me know in the comments what should i do to this bike all right so battery is dropping we're at 65 percent now all right so battery readout under load now under acceleration we're at 59 percent Let's keep going, guys. It is getting cold. The sun is going down. Thank God for a full face helmet. We just hit about 18 and a half miles. Oh, see that battery dipped down to 45% under acceleration. Let's see if I stop. Where will it go? 47, 48, 49. All right, so maybe we're at about 50%. Yeah, 50%. I don't know how much higher it'll go. 52. We're going to get to 20 miles for this ride. And then uh, I'll take this battery off, put it on the multimeter and see where it's at. So the battery has a little green lightning bolt, which means that it is right in the middle. It's, it's got a middle amount of charge. 
all the way up is at the top blue and then at the bottom red looks like we're recovering now we're up to 60 percent interesting let's keep going guys we'll get to 20 miles still plenty of acceleration even at 50 percent battery somewhere on there plenty and look at this i can still go fast Jeez. Look at this, we're going up a hill, no problem. 30 miles an hour. So this area is on the hillier side. See how it does. Look at this, guys. Easy. So much power. This bike is awesome. So we're getting a little bit steeper here. And now under full throttle, the battery is dipping down to 38 percent, 35, 34 percent under acceleration. Still plenty of hill climbing power, guys. Very impressive. Even at half battery. Look at this. So now I'm seeing 27 percent under heavy acceleration. 26 percent. 25 man what is going on 24 wow that was crazy let's see where it recovers battery is showing red now wow that's crazy all right so we're 27 29 30 can't really feel the motor the motor is warm but just barely that's good that's a good sign 35%. Now the battery is green. Interesting. Still plenty of power in this lower voltage level. A lot of other e-bikes, they lose their hill climbing ability once that voltage goes down below 50%, but this one is doing just fine. Man, I love zooming around on this thing. So quiet, so stealthy. All right, battery is down, showing 18% under load. We'll throw this battery on the multimeter after giving it some time to rest. We'll see where it's at. Oh boy, traffic city. Oh boy, we might be out here all day, guys. Let's put on turn signal on so people know where we're going. One eternity later. Some people like to stop and tell you to go ahead and they block traffic. And I do appreciate that, but I'd rather they just follow whoever has the right of way because it just confuses everyone. All right, turn signal off. Let's go. Here we go. Seat comfort is great. Even after two hours, the seat comfort is totally fine. All right, guys. So let's talk about this bike. My final thoughts on this Goat Power Bikes Motor Goat. It's freaking awesome. It's freaking cool. It looks cool. It performs amazing. 40 mile an hour top speed, an actual 40 mile an hour top speed, tested both ways. So you can take wind and gravity resistance and mostly negate the effects of those and have an accurate top speed. So this thing actually hits 40 miles an hour on flat ground. Not a slight downhill, not with the wind at your back. And the acceleration is great. Honestly, it feels like a geared hub motor. It hill climbs like a mule. Fantastic. Seat comfort is great. Brakes are amazing. The quad piston calipers with the two or three millimeter rotors are phenomenal, guys. And you really do need those kind of brakes for this type of bike that can go this fast. The minor issues on this bike are easily fixable. The controller rattles around a tiny bit under the seat. You can easily fix that. The tire rubbing issue, that's an easy fix, and they are gonna be fixing that in future generations of the bike. They're looking into getting a wider fork. You can buy this bike with pedals on it, so you have no issues with uh, the police for legal reasons. But if you don't want pedals, that's fine too. It performs just fine without pedals. 60 volt system, always appreciated. That's gonna give you that high top speed. The 25 amp hour battery, that's a lot, guys. And they are going to be switching these cells eventually 
to Samsung cells because everyone wants Samsung cells or LG cells a little bit higher quality there suspension does feel nice the seat feels fantastic very comfortable bike for commuting turn signals are there that I can actually see from where I'm sitting they're not hidden so I'm not gonna be riding around with a turn signal that's on the whole time and I have no idea range is pretty good right now we're climbing this hill we're just on level two we're going slow but I hit 21 and a half miles still have battery life showing 18 percent under load under acceleration probably gonna recover to like 25 percent but again these battery bars they're not accurate you really do want to put it on a multimeter see what the voltage is and let's check the voltage after our test ride we have 59.2 volts so like i said before guys this might be the best bike of 2024 for the performance that you get for the features that you get for the price kind of unbeatable if you're into moped style e-bikes this is the one to get guys ignore anything else just get this you guys will be really happy and once again guys if you do like videos like this feel free to subscribe to the channel if i've earned your subscription like the video if you like it hit the notification bell and if you don't like it tell me why in the comments tell me why you're mad if you want to save 10 percent on this bike use the link in my description that'll save you some money and it will help this channel at no extra cost to you thank you guys for stopping by and watching this video until next time